In this tutorial, I'll show you how to design a logo using Adobe Illustrator CS5.5 on a Mac. The first thing you want to do when you start a project is create a projects folder. I like to do this on my desktop. So I'm just going to control click, new folder, and I'll give this folder a name. I'm going to call it my last name and the kind of title for the project. In this case, it'll be logo. Here is where I'll put all the content related to the project that I'm working on. Let's go ahead and open up Illustrator. I'm going to go to the Applications folder on my launch pad and find Illustrator. Some of you may be getting a new document window that appears, and this is what you want. So for those of you who didn't get that window, you want to follow along. Let's go to File, New, and here's the new document window. So this is asking several things. The first thing is, it's asking, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to design something for print, for the web, for a mobile device? So for example, if we're designing something for the web, you'll see all these different screen sizes. These are the most popular screen sizes for the web. If we're designing something for mobile devices, you also get popular mobile device sizes as well. We're designing something for print, so we're going to go ahead and leave it as print, and we're going to save for the web later. The other thing is you can choose the paper size and I would stick with letter, it's most popular, and units. I rarely ever, if ever, have worked in points. Usually when you're designing for print you work in picas or inches. I've never used millimeters, I've never used centimeters, and pixels is a unit of measurement you use when you're designing for the web. So in this case, I'm going to stick to inches. CMYK is what we want to work in for print. If we were working for the web, we would change it to RGB, but we're going to save for web later, so let's leave it at CMYK. And then hit OK. So now we have our document. Let's go ahead and save this file. As you can see, it's untitled right now, so let's go ahead and save it. So File, Save As, and we're going to save it in the folder that we created on our desktop. So here's my desktop. I'm going to save it in this folder and I'm going to call it the exact same thing. Just hit OK, and there we go. One of the things I like to do before I get started is to kind of map out the area that I have to work with on my logo and my project. So to do that, I'm going to use two functions. One's called rulers, the other's called guide rules. So if I go to view, rulers, show rulers, and I also want to make sure my guide rules are showing, so I'm going to go to View, Guides, and I want to make sure these two things are unchecked. So I want it to read Hide Guides and Lock Guides, because in reality, you're showing your guides, and your guides are unlocked. So make sure these are unchecked. I can see here that I'm working with 8.5 width by 11 deep. That's the standard letter size. But I know that my logo can be any deeper than 3 inches, and it's 6 inches wide. So I really only have 6 inches that I want to work with on the width. So I'm going to do a little math here. If I know my page is 8.5 wide minus 6, that's 2.5 inches I need to shave off. So I'm going to shave off an inch and a quarter on each side. I'm going to click and drag from the rule and go an inch and a quarter to the left, click and drag, and go an inch and a quarter on the right hand side. Then I'm going to draw a rule down from the top, and this is arbitrary, but I'm just going about a half an inch. And then I want to make sure it's no deeper than three inches. So I'm going to click on this zero marker here at the top and drag it over to where my cross hatches are. Then I can drag another rule down to three inches. So now I know this is the area that I have to work with. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing by using the magnifying glass on the toolbar and I'll use the tools as I go through this demonstration one by one. So using the magnifying glass, I'm going to draw an imaginary square over the area that I'm working with. The first thing I'm going to do is use the type tool. So I'm going to click on the type tool and draw a box. So click and drag. And the name of the person that I'm designing the logo for is Mary Typeface. Now Mary is trapped in the 1960s. She is a peace-loving person and she loves the 60s. So I want to use a font that really typifies who she is. I'm going to go over here to my character panel and click on the word character. Here I can change the typeface, the style, the point size, I can adjust the letting and the kerning as well. So I'm going to pick a typeface that really says who she is and I already have one in mind. 
hobo. And I'm going to make this bigger. So I'm going to make it 55 point. Now I'm using my direct selection tool, this black arrow, just to move around the bounding box. I can also click on the handles here to adjust so that nothing connects to it when I start to design other elements. The other thing I want to make sure is that there's no strange spacing between letters. Usually you see this with T's and I's. So if there's some strange spacing between this T and Y, let's say, I can put a cursor in between the two letters and I can adjust the kerning down here in Illustrator. So I can make this larger if I want to increase the space or I can make it smaller if I want to decrease the space. Now I'm going to draw an object. Most obvious choice is a flower. So I'm going to use the shape tool and it might default as your rectangle tool but if you click on the little arrow down here at the bottom you'll see these other tools that you can use as well. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool to draw some petals on the flower. So I'm just going to randomly draw some petals. Now this is a very very quick demo here and to move these over so I can kind of see what I'm doing, I'm just going to drag an imaginary box over all of it. And notice how it's grabbing the name too. I don't want that. So I'm going to hit shift to take off Mary Typeface and move this over so I can play around with it a little bit more. I can use the arrows on my keyboard to kind of adjust these petals a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do here. I also want to give this a color. So here is your fill color and your stroke color when you use your shape tool. So if I click using my direct selection tool on a petal, I can double click on the fill and choose any color in this color picker. Now notice the CMYK. So right now it's 100% black. C is for cyan or blue, M is for magenta or red, and Y is for yellow. But I can click in here and notice how this changes. So this is what makes up this color red that I'm choosing. I also can use this hexadecimal number, which if I copy over Command C, I can use it in the next demo. So I'm going to hit OK, and that changes my petal. I can also click on all of these petals, so I'm just shift clicking and holding so it selects all of them. Double click on here. I can come in here and paste that hexadecimal number and hit OK, and notice all my petals are changed. I changed the petals back to black so I can show you one more way you can colorize things in Illustrator. If I want to make these petals this color, I can use what's called the eyedrop tool, which is on the toolbar if you hover over it, and I can click on the pink petal and I can make the other petals the same color as that so it picks up the same attributes. So if I want to click on these petals, I can use the eyedrop tool and make them pink as well. Now if I want to rotate my flower so it doesn't look so formal, I can draw an imaginary box over it using my selection tool. I'm going to click off Mary Typeface and I can use what's called my rotation tool. And I can come over here and rotate the flowers by just clicking on one of the anchor points. So that's kind of a handy way of rotating. I'm going to move over the flower a little bit and move it up because I want to draw a stem. For the stem, I can use the line tool. And before I use a tool, I like to see what color is selected. So if I have the line tool selected, I want to change this so that my stroke, which is what you use for a line, is a particular color. So in this case, I'm going to use black. So I'm just going to change the CMYK here to make this 100% black. And I can use the line tool and just drag the line. Now notice how my properties panel changed up here, depending on the tool that I selected. So if I wanted a wider stem, I could do a wider stem. I want a more organic stem. So I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to use what's called the brush tool. So let me move my petals up a little bit higher. The brush tool is right under the line tool. I want to make sure that I'm using the right color here. So I'm going to use green. And I'm going to draw a stem. Much better. The other thing I like to do is make sure 
my objects are on the baseline, that they line up to something. So if I click and drag a rule, I want to make sure my stem lines up with that baseline. So it's always a good idea to line elements up. So I'm going to use my magnifying glass, and I'm going to come in here, I'm going to click on my stem, and I'm going to drag it up so that it aligns with the baseline. Now I want to group the logo that I just made. To do this, I want to sweep over, using my direct selection tool, the elements. Now notice I'm also picking up the guide rules, and I don't necessarily want to do that. So I'm going to lock down my guide rules. So I'm going to go to Guides, Lock Guides. And now I'll sweep over my logo again. I'll go to Object and Group. So now all my elements are grouped together, and I can move them, and they'll all stay together. So I want to make a black and white version of this. So I'm going to go Command C and Command V to make a copy. Now I want to ungroup this logo. So I'm going to go to Object, Ungroup, and I want to make these petals gray. So I'm going to click on my fill square here, and I'm going to choose web colors because this is the fastest way of doing this, and I'll choose a gray. I'll also come over here to the stem, which is green, and I want to make that black. So I'm going to click on this green tool and just click on black. If I didn't want to use web colors, I could come over here and sweep over this and make this all 100% for black. does the same thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and group this, object group, and now I need to make smaller versions of this. So I'm just command minusing to zoom out so that you can see the page. I'm going to click on the color version and I'm going to make a copy. So edit, copy, edit, paste. Command C, Command V on a Mac. And if I go to object and I go to transform, scale, I can make this 50% and then hit OK. So there's my color version that's a small size. I can also do my gray version so I'm going to copy and paste another version of this and I want to make sure this is 50% so I'm going to go to object transform scale 50% and there we go so I'll just move that right next to that one. There are just a few more things you want to do to upload your file. The first thing is save a PDF copy of it so go to file save as and from the drop down menu change this as a PDF. Leave the same naming convention put it in your projects folder and hit save. Now notice when you hit save, you're working on the PDF file. This is not what you want to do. You always want to be working on the native Illustrator file. So I'll close out of that and I'll reopen the native Illustrator file. I want to make only a web version of the top logo here, not all of these. So to do that, it gets a little messy. So I'm going to make a copy of this file, save as, I'll put a 2 on this and save it in my projects folder. Now I want to use a tool called Artboard Tool, which if you hover over it, you'll see it's down toward the bottom and it creates this cropping tool, if you will, that you can adjust the handles and crop your logo that you want for the web. Then I'll use my direct selection tool, I'll go to File, Save for Web and Devices. It will only show that one logo, not all four. I want to change this to a JPEG. I usually leave the quality at the default. I hit Save, and now I'll take off the two and I'll save it as a JPEG. Then I can close out of this file. The last thing you want to do is create a fonts folder in your projects folder. So that way, if a typesetter doesn't have the typeface on their machine, they can add it. So I just control clicked and create a new folder in my projects folder. I'm going to move this off to the side, and I'm going to go into my applications folder. I'm going to find a font book, which houses all your typefaces. I'll find the typeface that I'm using, which in this case is Hobo. I'll control click on it and do reveal in finder. So here again is all the typefaces on my machine. I want to make sure I hold option. That's really important. Highlight the typeface and drag it into my fonts folder. If you don't hold option, it will make a it won't make a copy. It'll actually pull the typeface off. So you really want to you really want to do that. Then I'll close out of it. And the last thing you want to do is compress your folder. So I'm just going to control click on it, compress, and this is the zipped folder I will upload for the typesetter. I hope that you learned the basics of Illustrator in this tutorial and that it starts you on the path of doing some amazing things with Illustrator.